In this video, we shall put together two measures of uh, dispersion and we shall include one measure of central tendency. All of them contained in one statistical tool and we call that tool the box plot or the box and whisker plot. Why do you call it a box whisker plot? Because it shows a box, a rectangular box. And two whiskers. So this is your box. These two are the whiskers. So what information does a box plot show? It shows the maximum and minimum values in your data set. So where is the maximum here? That is the maximum. The minimum. This one is the maximum. Okay. And this one are the minimum of each of these data sets. And right away, when you have the max and the mean, you know the range. Because the range is just max minus mean. What else? The median. The median is a measure of central tendency. or That is what you can imagine to be the average. The average of all values in your data set. The box plot also shows your first quartile or Q1 or the lower quartile. And these are your lower quartiles. Okay, so the intersection, if you were to draw a vertical line through those uh, points, the intersection between the vertical lines and your horizontal axis will be the value of your lower quartile. We call it Q1. The third quartile, which is what we call the Q3, it is the median of 50% of your data values from starting from the median of the entire data set to the maximum value. So I will introduce to you another measure of dispersion. I think this is the first time I am introducing this. This is what we call IQR. So from the name itself, you can tell that this is a measure of scattering. How scattered or how dispersed are the values in your data set? So IQR is a measure of that. And how do you compute it? We get the difference between, we get the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Okay, so what is the purpose of a box plot? So a box plot is very helpful when making a quick comparison of different sets of comparable or experimental data. Let's say, for example, in this uh, figure, let's say, for example, uh, this is the results of an exam, the same exam by three different sections. One is, let's say, for example, from section on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we can produce a box plot for the results of their exam, and right away we can make comparison. So among the three, this has the greatest median. Among the three, this one has the least degree of scattering measured, measured through your IQR. So that is the sort of information we can get right away from the box plot. It allows for a quick comparison of data sets. Example 2.7, compare service times using box plots. A team of students studied the service times of two fast food restaurants. For quick comparison, they produced two box plots for their data sets. You know the service times. The service times is the waiting time. It's like, hey, I am ordering one sandwich. How many minutes does it take for the crew to give you your sandwich? That is the service time. And so we have the students who studied and monitored the service times of two fast food restaurants. They collected the data and they produced this box plot. Okay, so how do you interpret this? So the horizontal axis is the length of time. So this one has a maximum service time of 6.3 minutes. Storby has a maximum service time of 9.7 minutes. Okay, so that is how you understand. That is how you interpret this figures. Okay, so what are the questions? What is the average service times of each store as measured by the median? Which is more consistent with service times? 
So the average service times is a measure of central tendency. So on average, after collecting so many data, on average, the service times of store A can be found from the median, this one. So let's call it X bar sub A is equal to 2.4 minutes. The average time, the average service time for store B is 2.2 minutes. So by comparing these service times, the average service times, we can tell with some grain of uh, carefulness, because the difference is small, that the average service time in store B is faster than in store A, which is more consistent with their service times. How do you interpret consistency? When there is a wide scattering of data values, if your service times are varied, they are not consistent. When there is less variation in your service times, the service time is more consistent. So what ought to be our measure for determining which is more consistent with the service time? Well, we can use the, the IQR, the interquartile range, I, K I Q R. For this one, the IQR is 2.8 minus 1.8 and so that is just equal to one minute that is the average uh, degree of uh, variations in service time as measured through the iqr how about for store b what is the iqr iqr for store b is it's big it's relatively big it's 5.7 minus one so this one is equal to to 4.7 so from here, we can make a conclusion that the service times in store A is more consistent than the service times in store B. And the statistic that we used to make that conclusion is the interquartile range. So again, the service times, the average service time for store A is 2.4, measured uh, by the median. For store B, it is 2.2. Store A is more consistent because the interquartile range of Store A is less than the interquartile range of Store B. In fact, you can make that conclusion just by comparing the length of the rectangle or the length of the box. So this one is shorter. This one is longer. So this one has a shorter interquartile range. This one has a longer interquartile range. How do we produce a box plot? What do you have to do? Do you have to get a cotton band, get a pencil and ruler, and sketch the box plot? Well, guess what? Excel has a function to produce the box plot. So let's say, for example, we have these data sets. This is the result of a quiz given to three sections. Section A is a section that meets on Monday, B is on uh, Wednesday, and C is on Friday. And this is the result of the exam given to them, the same exam. Okay, so let us now produce the box whisker plot. So what you do is highlight your data set, insert, and click the charts. Okay, what else? And look at that, all charts. And then you will see their box and whisker. Okay, so let us click it and take a look at that. So I'm telling you, when you are studying math, it is also an opportunity for you to learn other things. In this case, to learn how to use a spreadsheet.